Hello everybody, welcome to another Magic Arena video. Today we're going to be testing out a deck that I found on Aetherhub, I believe. Uh, it's a blue-black discard deck. Uh, I've tried a couple different variants of like just a, it's sort of like 8-rack strategy. And honestly, I've not had very good luck, but uh, I did find this list and I thought it looked interesting, so we'll give it a shot. Uh, it's got much more of a control element, uh, but also a good bit of discard. So I have flexed this a little bit. I've got two divest and two duress. Uh, originally, it only had two duress and no divest, but I've found at least in games of one, uh, it's useful to have both. Uh, a lot of times you'll run into the mono red deck, and honestly, either one is good in that matchup. Uh, they kind of run 50-50 spells to creature ratio, uh, at least I have found. So, really like both of them. Uh, we have Vicious Rumors as a way uh, to deal the last point of damage, which actually did come into play at one point. Uh, but then also discard a card and then puts the top card of their deck into their graveyard. You gain a life, negligible at best. Uh, Burglar Rat is another way to discard cards as well as get a creature on the board. And yes, it is only pinging for one every turn uh, if you can actually swing in with, swing in with it. Uh, but that's okay, we're not really looking to deal like tons and tons of damage right off the bat. Um, we do have Augur of Bolas here, uh, just a couple blue cards in this deck. Augur of Bolas being one of them is a way to search out certain cards that you may need uh, from the top of your deck. We've got t uh, three, excuse me, cast down. Uh, fourth Auto Erasure, great catch-all, just hand destruction spell. If you can get it off on turn two, it is the bane of a lot of decks. Uh, Narset, which shuts down a lot of extra draw. Uh, as well as digs us into our deck a little bit further to hopefully pull out something a little more important. Uh, I found Narset is really, really good in this. Uh, but I do only run three because it is double blue and we're pretty skimpy on the blue lands in this deck. Um, honestly, I found it to be a bit of a problem. Uh, and so I think I did back down on the Narsets by one just for that reason. Uh, but it is definitely a powerful card in this matchup. Davril, of course... Uh, kind of the key card behind all of this, you get to discard their their hand a little bit, uh, and then deal two damage to him as you go. Uh, Davril's Shadow Fuge. Uh, this was a card that was not on my radar in a normal discard deck, but I've actually found it to be okay. Obviously, we're not running the full four gambit of these. Uh, it's not good enough to run the four fo the full four, excuse me. Uh, but being able to discard two cards. Uh, actually does come in handy uh, pretty regularly, so I actually like that. Uh, the rest here, two Ritual of Soot, two Vrasco's Contempt, and two Eldest Reborn. All ways to deal with the board, deal with the opponent's threats, things like that. Uh, we are running, I believe, 20 lands, if I am not mistaken. Uh, I believe I shaved a land in this. Uh, I originally was at 21, but I shaved it down to 20. That might be a mis mistake, excuse me, because we do have some 4s and 5s and things like that. Uh, but honestly, we usually don't need too many lands for this deck to work. The idea being that we just use a bunch of discard and then get them down to very few resources uh, and then punish them in the late game. So that's kind of the plan. We're going to do three casual matches as we always do. And as we do this, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about something that's pretty relevant to me. So it's a bit of a story time uh, while we do this. But um, so hopefully you guys can relate a little bit. But Something I wanted to talk about, uh, I mentioned in the last couple videos, in fact, I am about to go to Korea uh, for a work conference. So I'm going to be gone for, I think it's a week. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. It's a three-day conference. We have a setup day. We also have an arrival day that we're going to get in and try and get on to that time, which is literal opposite of the time that I'm on right now. Um, it's like a 12 or 13 hour difference. So that is going to be a bit tough, but we're going to do the best we can. Um, yeah, I think we keep this hand. It's not super ideal. I'd like to have a turn one play, but uh, honestly, I think this is definitely good enough. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to be out for a week. I'm going to hopefully be able to record some gameplay videos and things, but honestly, I have no clue if that's going to be possible or not. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead. Watery Grave tapped. <coughs> so, but it brought up this for the last like week or so. I've found myself to be very, very stressed, and I'm not a very stressful person. At least I don't think of myself as a very stressful person. So I don't think like on a day-to-day -day basis, I get very stressed out. Even if there's something difficult that's going on or if I have a lot to do, normally it's like, okay, I have a day of busyness, but it's nothing to stress about, right? Like I've got other things to keep my mind off of it. I've got more things to do to worry about that 
are are bigger deals so i'm not really all that worried about whatever i've got going on that day i'll just get it done um but i have found in the last week or so <laughs> uh okay well i guess we won game one um but i've found in the last week or so that i've been very very stressed um and i think in particular it's because i'm going to not only be away for a full week and be working which i'm not really stoked about um but it's going to be a brand new place and not only a new place but a new place that is completely different from my understanding of what i am used to and uh i've heard korea south korea is very westernized things like that but it is still a different country people speak a different language there obviously and so it's going to be a big change uh and so i found myself to be very very uh anxious in the last couple days um which is annoying I'm not, i don't do well with stress uh i found myself like putting that stress into other areas of my life which i do not like uh, it's been very, very stressful just to like do regular tasks, like even just recording videos a little bit has been stressful because I feel like I've got so much to do so much on my plate that it's overwhelming and it's getting to the point where it's demotivating to do these things. Now, obviously in a week, the stress will be lifted from this trip. It will be not as big of a deal. I'm going to go ahead and do this and then vicious rumors, <coughs> excuse me, um, and so it'll be fine long term. I know it will be. I just have to get through the next week. But um, it is stressful. I don't like that. Uh, I don't like always having, you know, stress on me for a conference or something along those lines because that's just not very fun, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, there are much more important things, I feel like, that should be stressed about than just a conference. Um, now, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm a web developer, and so uh, um, divest your thought erasure. Probably divest so we can burglar rat and then use that, uh, or use that and then burglar rat, excuse me. But um, so for anybody that doesn't know, uh, sorry, getting off track, um, I am a web developer. I also do like AV and stuff like that. And so with the conferences that we have, I'm just kind of setting up the presentations, making them usable for the people there who are presenting, working with those people to make sure everything is as updated as possible, and then working with the AV team at wherever we're at, which in this case is a Korean uh, technology center, um, and just doing the best I can to keep everything running on track and uh, making sure everybody's happy with all the, the stuff that we've got set up and all that jazz. So it... It tends to be a bit, um, once we're there, not as bad as like I would initially think. But that being said, it is still really, really annoying to do all of the stuff that uh, re is required of me to make sure that everything gets done. A lot of it is set up and things like that, of course, but in general, it just it requires a lot. So needless to say, I have been very, very stressed. And uh, if it shows through in the videos, first things first, I just wanted to apologize other than just talking about it, um, because I certainly don't mean to be overbearing with uh, stress and things like that. And I certainly don't want to neglect uh, posting videos by any means, because obviously posting videos is important um, for it resolves. I just want to make sure that everything continues the way it has been uh, and continues to grow. I mean, that's the idea. Uh, and so... If it has been kind of showing in the last week or two that I haven't been as motivated, I haven't been posting as many videos or something along those lines, then first things first, I apologize. But second, I just want to reassure you that long term, we're going to get back on track. We're going to start posting more videos and stuff like that, as we always do. Uh, we just have to get there first and we have to get through this next week, <laughs> unfortunately, to actually get there. Uh, but that is the plan. And what I've found, though, to be, I think, the worst part of all of this is that um, in just my daily life, like just having conversations with people, literally people have asked me, like, hey, dude, are you OK? And I mean, of course, I'm OK. Like, it sucks, but I'm OK. I just have a lot to do. And so but people have clearly noticed. And that's not like it's a little bit frustrating, I guess, because I don't want to to be the person that's like always stressed about stuff and um, takes that and like makes it very, very obvious for other people because that's not cool. Like other people have their own things to worry about. They don't need to be worrying about me and all that stuff. But 
regardless, uh, it's just been an interesting, we'll say, week or two uh, just to get through everything. We are getting through it now. Um, I'm leaving. I suppose this will go up uh, the day I record, most likely. So it'll probably be up Thursday, if not Friday. Um, and I'll be leaving Saturday. And so, <laughs> excuse me. Um, ah, that's annoying. Um, so yeah, I'll be leaving Saturday. I will be back the following Saturday. Obviously, I'm going to be pretty busy uh, throughout that time. Ooh, unfortunate that we just keep drawing uh, lands. But um, regardless, uh, I just wanted to bring that out into the open a little bit to make sure you guys understood what was going on. Uh, because it is frustrating, and I know you guys are just here to watch Magic content, so I would hate to, to spoil that for uh, the simple fact of I'm just trying to get through a conference. So, unfortunately, the real world is always is always there and is always uh, important, as well as the YouTube world, uh, and so that's just, that's just how it is. But regardless, I do hope you guys uh, have been enjoying, in particular, the gameplay content. Oh, no. Uh, and this is why, by the way, I shaved the land, uh, because we were just flooding way too often. Um, but yeah, I, I do hope you guys are enjoying all the, the arena content, because we're doing our best to make sure that we've got uh, a little more in the way of... Can we get away with cast downing the Forgotten? Yeah. I think we have... We don't have to, but <laughs> I don't want them to be able to activate that anymore. Um... But we're trying to do a little bit more in the way of gameplay just for you guys to enjoy and also to better ourselves as players a little bit. Um, some of the things... Well, this is not going to help, are we? Uh, potentially, but I doubt it. Um, does this get buy us a turn? I think it does. So we exile this. We can block one thing. And then we gain two. So that keeps us in the game. Um, it's still pretty bad though. Um, but regardless, uh, uh, well, now we're probably definitely going to lose. Uh, yeah. Um, regardless, uh, we have been doing our best to make sure that you guys are enjoying new content and things like that. So I hope you are. Uh, unfortunately not winning game two there. Uh, no surprise though. Again, this deck suffers from, uh, so it's sort of the opposite of the Super Friends deck that we have been doing uh, and that we played on Ranked actually recently. The big issue, or the big upside of that deck is that because you're playing like tons and tons of Planeswalkers, a lot of your draws are high value draws at any point in the game because uh, you could draw a three mana Planeswalker late in the game, but because it's a Planeswalker and because it has relevant abilities most of the time or at any point throughout the game, um, it it kind of is okay if you draw it later in the game instead of, you know, it's not like this where if you draw a duress and they just have no cards in hand because that's the point of the game that we're at. Oh, I don't think we can keep this. Um, <laughs> then obviously that's terrible. Uh, but if you draw a planeswalker, then that's great because you just now have a win more engine. So do we divest or do we duress? My bet is on dur or divest, excuse me. Um, though that may be incorrect. We will see. Nope, definitely correct. Uh, we're going to take the walker. That's such a key card in these green decks that I just do not want them to have it. What else did they have? Nothing super relevant, but we will thought erasure here. Just to keep them off of plays as best as we can. More and more lands. Uh, we can deal with that. We're going to take the Evolution Sage. And I think we'll keep the Thought Erasure, actually. Uh, just so we can take whatever their next play is. Um, or at least see what it's going to be with Duress and then Thought Erasure or something along those lines. <laughs> we'll go ahead and Duress here just because probably isn't going to hit much anyway. Um... Yeah, they just have forests. Okay. And then we will go ahead and auger. Uh, just so we can block this. And we get another Thought Erasure. <laughs> well, we've got all the hand destruction, which is what this deck is trying to do. Uh, ah, don't like that. Please whiff and just hit a land. Okay, cool. They did just hit a land. 
not going to attack. More hand destruction. Well, we're going to pass. Um, so yeah, uh, we've been doing what we can at least to make the channel a little more uh, diverse and uh, fun for you guys. And hopefully you guys are seeing that at the very least. Uh, I'm just trying to do this to keep them off of as many plays as possible. Ah. Well, we'll go ahead and Thought Erasure. That's totally fine. <coughs> Excuse me. And we will graveyard that. Um, really looking for, what, a Davril maybe? Uh, or a Narset would be okay? Pelt Collector, that's a bit annoying. We'll go ahead and get rid of this. Yeah, it's going to put a counter on the Collector, but uh, I'd rather get rid of at least a threat. <coughs> Whew. And there's that issue again. We keep flooding out. Um, with only 20 lands, excuse me, I wouldn't think that this has a high risk of flooding out, but it is what it is. Uh, now they're going to start being able to swing with that Pelt Collector, which is not good. Oh, that's really not good. So we are going to go ahead and chump here. Uh, and it definitely looks like we're in a bad place with this game. Uh, if we get... What do we need? That helps. Still not great. Um, the Evolution Sage is very, very good, but we're going to have to get rid of that. Uh... <laughs> The problem I find with this deck, and we're seeing this in example right now, is that, um, again, not only are the late game draws just, they tend to be quite bad, but um, on top of that, well, I think we'll take that. We can't play it this turn, which kind of sucks, but we'll go ahead and Thought Erasure. They may just have a land, but that's fine, yeah. But we do get to Surveil, <laughs> ditch that Swamp. Um, uh, but yeah, so the, the issue that I find with this deck is that it is very reactive, so they have a chance to play all of their spells before it actually, like, matters that much. <laughs> um, it's not like we can just hand, just, like, if they play them, we can't do that much about them, is the best way I can put that. I mean, certainly we have things like Vraska's Contempt and stuff like that, which, trust me, I'm super happy to have, but uh, unfortunately... It's not exactly the most, uh, it's, it's not great at controlling the board. Uh, it certainly is okay at it, but it's not great. Um, and so here, uh, let's see. Well, we'll go ahead and do this. Vicious Rumors, they're going to discard a land, I'm guessing. We gain a life, and then we'll throw out a wrap. So they'll discard whatever's left in their hand. Probably a land, yep. And now, what do we get to do? Well, that is bad. So we have to block here, unfortunately, and we are down to one turn. If we can draw a removal spell for the Evolution Sage, which we didn't. All right, well, they got it. So that's three games, guys. I'm going to go ahead and call this one. Unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of this deck. I just thought I'd give it a shot. Um, I do want to make discard work, but I just don't think there's enough tools uh, for it to really, really get its legs in standard. Obviously, we have eight rack and things like that in modern. Uh, but regardless, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. If I don't get to put more videos out soon, uh, it is because I will be in uh, Korea for that conference, but I promise I will be doing it more uh, as soon as I get back. So thank you guys for your understanding in advance, and I will see you in the next Magic Arena video.